G'day everyone, today we are in my backyard to learn how to build a light gate using the new graphing features in Spike Prime. So before we do our experiment to see how fast our uh, paper aeroplane is flying, we need to create our light gate. Now, you can see here, this is a very simple build, okay? So all it is, is the hub in the middle of this plate. And we are going to create these two uh, sensors, okay? We've got a blue sensor over here, this light uh, um, color sensor, and also this red sensor over here. But this uh, color-coded system is going to be important for us later on, okay? Uh, as a guide, what we want to do is we want to create this light gate so that the sensors are uh, as far apart as possible, but still close enough for us to measure that uh, paper aeroplane. Uh, so because the paper aeroplane is going to uh, be uh, quite erratic when it's flying, um, uh, we want to still be able to cut through both of these sensors uh, when it flies through. If the sensors are too far apart, then it's going to be really difficult for you to uh, fly an aeroplane uh, straight through. But if you were uh, measuring something else like a cart or uh, uh, some sort of uh, bicycle or something like that, then, uh, then yeah, you can have them much further apart. Uh, and then what we need to do is uh, do some very simple code using the new Spike Prime graphing tools. So the code is going to be really easy, but in order to access our graphing tools, we need to show the block extensions. So go to the bottom left here, click on show block extensions, and then you click on line graph here. Press line graph, and then you close the window. Now we are going to uh, scroll down, and then you'll see that we have some new blocks here. So this is plotting a line graph. Now what we want to do is that when we start our program, we want to clear our, uh, our line graph in case we've uh, plotted anything already. And then we're going to have a forever loop. After that, we go back down to our line graph blocks. And then we're going to plot two things. Uh, one on the blue line and one on a red line. Now remember I said that we have two um, color sensors, one on a blue clip and one on a red clip. That is what these are going to be representing so that we know which, uh, which uh, color sensor corresponds to which graph. So we want the blue one to be uh, our port A. So we go into sensors. And then we want to measure uh, A's reflected light intensity. And then for the second one, we want it to be measuring port B's light intensity. And that's it. So when this program starts, it's going to clear the line graph on, on, uh, on, your, um, on your graph if it's already drawn anything. But then after that, it's going to start plotting for A and B. Uh, so uh, let's uh, download it onto your hub and then let's go outside and test it out. We are going to see if we can calculate how fast this paper aeroplane is flying as it travels past this light gate. Uh, and then afterwards I'm going to show you how to do the calculations in order to, to uh, calculate the average speed of your paper aeroplane. Now that we've finished our experiment, we're going to bring back our Spike Prime Hub and we're going to plug it in uh, and try to download our information. So let's uh, get our <clears throat> USB cable. Uh, make sure Spike Prime is open and then let's plug it in. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, the device is plugged in um, perfectly fine. You can see that our sensors are, uh, are here. It's working uh, as expected. So now we want to get the data that was plotted when we were outside. So here down the bottom left, there is this little uh, graphing symbol. So we click on that. And then there's uh, nothing here at the moment. But what you need to do is press this full screen button. After you press the full screen button, you'll start to see things that we can access here. So in, down the bottom, there is this import button. We click on import and then choose your hub. Click on our hub and then you'll see that this is the data from the different lines that we were graphing from before. So there's the blue line and the red line. So we select everything and then we press import. Give it a few seconds. Here we go. So while I was outside, uh, like I said, the airplane is pretty erratic. So uh, there, there's a lot of attempts here, but uh, I couldn't see uh, any really successful uh, attempts except for this one little one over here. So I'm going to drag a section around my good data and then I'll let go. Yeah, all right. So now we have these two little blips. Okay, this represents when uh, the airplane cut through the blue gate and then the airplane cutting through the red gate. So you choose a, um, a, a place on both of these blips, okay? So, and then we have to try to remember um, uh, that reading. So here is the start of my, um, my blue reading, and I'm going to record it as 26.832 seconds. So this is 26.832 seconds since the program started running. So I'm just going to note this down myself. And then, it cuts through the red gate at 27.032 seconds. So that is the time difference. In order to measure the speed, we need to detect uh, the distance over time. Okay, so now we have the time readings from looking at the graph, but now we need to get the distance between our two sensors. And uh, this is an important part of our experiment. So we need to make sure we're measuring from the uh, same part of each sensor uh, as, uh, as accurately as possible. So I get my tape measure here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from this, this end of each sensor. So it's this end of this sensor and then this end of the red sensor. Don't measure the outside of both sensors because then you'll be off. You have to measure from the same spot of each sensor in order to get an accurate reading. So here, I'm going to use my tape measure, 30.5 centimeters. So now we have everything we need in order to calculate that average speed of that airplane as it was flying through this light gate. The distance that it traveled was 30.5 centimeters. And the time is the difference between the red reading and the blue reading, 0.2 seconds. We can multiply that by five, okay? So um, uh, if, you, if you had a, another different reading, then what you'll need to do is you'll need to divide one second by however many um, fractions of a second that, that you have, okay? So, but uh, what we have is 0.2, so we need to multiply the result by five, and then we'll get meters per second. That equals 152.5 centimeters per second. So that's 1.525 meters per second. And that's it. That's how you build a very simple light gate. And that's how you calculate uh, the average speed between the light gate of anything. You can use a paper airplane, you can build a little car and see how fast they go. Uh, or you can measure uh, something in real life. Maybe uh, you can uh, try and do some of your own experiments with this. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. And I'll see you next time.